The 16th Independent Parachute Brigade, alerted by the War Office, stands by for possible orders to proceed to a foreign destination. Inoculation of the 1st Battalion Parachute Regiment strengthened rumours that the airborne sharpshooters might be sent to Persia to protect British nationals employed there by the Anglo-Iranian oil company. With formidable equipment, the well-trained airborne men can be on the spot anywhere at short notice. The men under the fighting command of Brigadier Darling, by merely being alerted, have to some extent calmed down the extremists in Persia. If the paratroops do go there, their role will be to protect our own people, not to intimidate the Persians. At the head of the Persian Gulf, Abadan refines the crude oil of the Anglo-Iranian fields. Across the northern border of Persia, Soviet Russia rubs gleeful hands over the dispute. Beneath the stark Persian mountains lies some of the richest oil deposits in the world. British enterprise and money develop the oil fields, piping the crude oil to Abadan, the largest refinery in the world. Cracked down here is an output now exceeding 30 million tons a year. It supplies Britain herself with one quarter of her oil requirements, also Western Europe, India, Australasia, the Middle East. The company educates the children of the refinery workers, and when general education ends, teaches them a trade. Pour into the great plant at Abadan go increasing numbers of British-trained Persian technicians. The nationalization demand is only another name for confiscation. The scores of thousands working at the refinery have been told that the change would put them on easy street. Under the 1933 agreement, Persia received 16 million pounds last year and the revenue is increasing. But the Persians themselves have no tankers. The company owns 150 and charters many more. Nor have the Persians a selling organization. When the hot tempers have cooled, they may realize that only by cooperation with us can they fully benefit from the oil fields. 